It doesn't matter where you are coming from. All that matters is where you are going. The only real limitation on your abilities is the level of your desires. If you want it badly enough, there are no limits on what you can achieve. All successful people, men and women, are big dreamers. They imagine what their future could be, ideal in every respect, and then they work every day toward their distant vision, that goal or purpose. Now take a clean sheet of paper and write down goals on today's date. Then write down 10 goals that you would like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write them in the present tense, almost as if you're submitting an order. Just write, I earn, I achieve, I weigh, I drive such and such a car, I own whatever it happens to be. The goals will encompass financial goals, family goals, physical goals, and so on. Write down 10. Then take this list of 10 and ask yourself, if I had a magic wand and I could wave this magic wand to achieve any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Go over it, and usually this will jump out at you. Put a circle around that goal. That's the goal you transfer to a clean sheet of paper. Follow these steps. One, write it down. Two, set a deadline. Three, make a list of everything you have to do to accomplish it. Four, organize the list into a checklist. Five, take action. Six, do something every day. The act of taking the first step is what separates the winners from the losers. If you'll just keep doing this simple exercise, you'll all be rich. I'll be rich. Nothing can stop you but yourself. I'm gonna show you the recipes and the formulas that you can use. Sometimes it just takes one choice. Remember, 87% of millionaires and billionaires are self-made. They started with nothing. Nobody's smarter than you and nobody's better than you. If someone else can do it, especially with all the disadvantages that many people start off with, then you can do it as well. That's the proof. Abraham Lincoln once said that some become wealthy as proof that all can become wealthy. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision. And even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience at one time when we were small. We had a vision of growing up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. We fulfilled all our visions. The wonderful thing is this. We always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams, if you like, and focus on results, not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are result-oriented. All losers or underachievers tend to be activity-oriented. In activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do. But they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said, the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And many of us work very, very hard to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. Anybody who's ever had employees will tell you that every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions I'll give you. Two, number one is, what results are expected of me? What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs? What am I supposed to produce in my job? The second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? What results are expected? The results that are expected of us in selling are sales. And the only time that we are working is when we are doing something that contributes directly to that result. Isn't that true? But of course, why do we do the other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason why we do the other things is because they are fun and easy rather than hard and necessary. I think the major reason why people fail in life, if I can pass this on, which wasn't part of this, but major reason why people fail in life is because of the expediency factor that we always do and we always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things that we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do what's fun and easy today instead of what is hard and necessary. 
and then we have to do what is hard and necessary at the end of our life when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself to be clear about what it is you want, to be clear where you're going, to be clear about the results that you're expected to accomplish, and then to only work on those results, the ability to discipline yourself to do that is absolutely critical for success. It is not possible to conceive of a person being successful who is not capable of disciplining themselves to do what is hard and what is necessary rather than what is fun and easy. And when, especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. Now let me give you a method which has helped me. Write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, Wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly. And then do this every single morning. Rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. You can do it all in a paragraph. For instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person, singular as thou, they already existed today. Every single morning, and then every single evening, take about five, 10 minutes, instead of watching television, just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress and sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right that's moved me toward my goals? And the second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those four steps, by the way, writing and rewriting your goals. Each morning, reviewing them in the evening and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want, anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis. You can have anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear, speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity. So I wanted to share with you what I call the seven C's. The first C is the C of clarity. Clarity is my favorite word in success. It's my favorite word in business. I have done consulting for more than a thousand corporations, large companies worldwide, companies like IBM, General Motors, PepsiCo, and Bank of America. I mean, big companies. What I found is in every single situation, problems occur when the company becomes unclear about what it is they're doing or how it is they're doing it. Basically, it's clarity, lack of clarity. Here's something else I learned. They did a study of 50 owners of companies, successful owners of companies like yourselves, and they asked them, what, what is the very best time management or business tool that you've ever discovered? You know, 49 out of the 50 held up a yellow writing pad, a yellow writing pad, sort of like this. And this is what they did. This is how they planned their day. They made a to-do list today that is, they wrote down everything they had to do. They always worked from a list. If you don't work from a list, it's very much like taking your hands off the wheel of your car, going down a winding road in the mountains. What happens is your life's gonna go up and you're instantly gonna start doing irrelevant and unimportant and useless things. And at the end of the day, you'll be exhausted and you'll accomplish nothing. The most powerful tool in the world is you, a pen and a piece of paper. This is the greatest wealth creator in the world. The second C is the C of competence. The C of competence says it's very simple. You can only earn a lot of money if you're very good at what you do. So one of the most important things you do is you break down your work into skills and you say, what are the most important skills I need to have to be successful? Recruiting is a very important skill. Training is an important skill. Managing, motivating is an important skill. 
leading, supervising, important skills. So what you do is you think, what are the skills that I will need to be in the top 10% of my field? You don't have to be in the top 1%, just be in the top 10%, because there are no successful people who are not good at what they do. They are good at what they do because they work at it all the time. Whether you're in sports or whether you're in music or chess or anything else, there's a wonderful study. Basically what it said was, studying the most successful people is that these people spend four more hours becoming good at what they do than average people. The other people don't do it. And that everybody has natural abilities, but the ones who use those abilities transform themselves by really, really working hard at becoming good, one skill at a time. This is another thing that's really important. Don't try to be good at everything, because what happens? You just break down, you just overwhelm yourself, and you'll just give up. I found that I never found a single person who was successful, who was not excellent at what they did. That competence, the commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success. That if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. That success is predictable if you commit yourself to becoming excellent. It does a whole lot of other things within your mind, but if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it changes everything about you. And only the top five or 10% are excellent. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, that the top 20% of salespeople make 80% of the sales, that the bottom 80% of salespeople make 20% of the sales. You know what the difference is? The ratio is there. The ratio is the difference between 16 to one, that the average income of people in the top 20% is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80%. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it mean that people in the top 20% are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? 16 times more experienced? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? But 20% of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest. You say, oh, I tried that before. I had an experience which I'll pass on to you. When I was a young man, I was in my 20s and I was in sales and I was in cold calling sales, knocking on doors every day. And I was making one or two sales a week. I was living in a little rooming house with a bed and a floor and a little bathroom and I was struggling. I could tell you within a dollar how much money I had in my world at that time because it was less than a dollar. And I worked. I'd get up at five or six o'clock in the morning. I'd be waiting at eight o'clock in the morning when people came to work. I would knock on doors, office doors, and business doors all day long. And then in the evenings, I'd go out and knock on homes and apartments, and I would make call after call after call. I made hundreds of calls with no sales. The first year, I made more than 20,000 calls and only made a few sales, just enough to survive. And then one day, I asked a question which I'm gonna help you with. As I said, of all the skills, what's holding me back more than anything else? And the answer was closing the sale, is that I couldn't get people to make a decision. So I made a decision. I still remember the time Dede placed it in my little rooming house when I decided I was going to learn how to become very good at closing sales. And I began to read everything I could find. I set away for books. I did everything I could find to study the psychology and the techniques and methods of closing sales. In one year, my income went up 10 times, changed my life forever. Prudential Insurance Company did a study some years ago and they put the thousands of agents that they have throughout the United States into their computers and compared their income and it came out, the 80-20 rule worked. 20% of their salespeople were doing 80% of the business. Well, they had all the data on the computer so they ran it through one more time. They said, what's the average income of the top 20% of the top 20% compared to the bottom 80%? Now for those mathematicians among you, that works out to the top 4%. What was the average income? They found the top 4% were earning on average 32 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. So they said, this is interesting. And they ran it through one more time. They found that the top 20% of the top 20% of the top 20%, which is the top 0.8%, that's good, top 0.8%. We're earning on average 54 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. What they found is that in every state and in every major city where they had an office with a large number of agents working out of it, there was one agent who was selling the same product at the same price to the same people with the same competition under the same circumstances, under the same set of difficulties in the economy. 
who was earning 50 times the amount of the average adult. There were 50 agents in the office, and one person was earning more than all of them put together. Isn't that amazing? And one of the things they found is that the key to this was that each one of these agents had made the commitment to become excellent early in their career. They didn't say, I'm gonna go into this and I'm going to earn a living. They said, I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna be the best. You must commit yourself to excellence. You must commit yourself to becoming the best. And the wonderful thing is that excellence is a journey. It's not a destination. You never get there. Complacency and satisfaction are the key enemies of excellence. But once you commit yourself to becoming excellent, the whole world opens up for you. A very important point of excellence is this. It means simply this. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Remember, it's usually the last five or 10% of any job or project that makes all the difference. And what we do is we get to 90% done and then we start to drag our heels, we start to put the paperwork aside, we start to think of excuses, we start to do what is fun and easy rather than what is hard and necessary. And if you're going to do anything at all, the only time you're going to get any joy out of it is if you do it well. You see, when we do something well, it gives us a feeling of self-esteem and pride. We feel like a winner. But if we do things in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. You notice that? It doesn't give us anything. But if we do it in a really exceptional way, it makes us feel wonderful about ourselves. You see, you don't have to be a quantum leap different from somebody else. You just have to be a little tiny bit different in the critical areas that make a difference. And you can achieve that simply by making it a goal and working on it. You can become anything that you want to become. The harder you work, the better you get. The harder you work, the better you get. You know, in our society, there is a lot of controversy or why should I work so hard for my job? The fact of the matter is that less than 5% really succeed. That's less than 5% of the population really succeed in life. Of 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire, four will be financially independent, 15 will have some savings, and 80% will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only one or 2% of people in each generation really make it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, hard, hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money, dependent upon pensions, and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work. In our society, you only work eight hours a day for survival. Everything over eight hours is for success. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society because it's so competitive that somebody else is working nine. They've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working 10. They've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour over eight that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off. And it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America who are unhappy and they're sad and they don't like their work. And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. The third C is the C of concentration. These are not necessarily in order, but in a way, these are the C of concentration. It's your ability to focus, which we've talked about before. It's your ability to focus single-mindedly on one thing at a time and to work on that one task until it's complete. Discipline yourself not to do anything else or to become distracted by emails, bells, beeps, and noises. It's just your ability to focus like a laser beam on a single task. Start and finish your most important task. The fourth C is the C of constraints. Between where you are today and where you wanna be sometime in the future, a goal, there is always one constraint or choke point that determines the speed at which you get from here to here. That's the constraint. So the art of life is to identify the constraints that are holding you back from achieving the goal that you want to achieve. Ask yourself, what is the one factor that determines the speed at which you achieve that goal? Don't try to change the world. Try to change one thing, 
one factor, try to alleviate the one factor, and that'll change your whole life. It's unbelievable. The fifth C is the C of continuous learning and development. To earn more, you must learn more. Your life only gets better when you get better. Dedicate yourself to becoming better and better at what you do. It must be a part of your life. You must breathe in, breathe out, and learn new things. Self-made millionaires, self-made billionaires spend 60 to 90 minutes every day studying their field. We need new material. Warren Buffett was just relegated from number three to number four richest man in the world, and Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. He reads all the time and he's one of the richest men in the history of the world, and he and his partners all say the same thing. You've gotta read, read, and learn all the time, and one idea can make you rich. So just keep flooding your mind with new ideas. What takes you from rags to riches is personal development, personal and professional development. In the 21st century, as Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century, and the only thing that will be relevant, the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. Stephen Covey says that your current knowledge base has a half-life of two years, which means that half of everything you know will be irrelevant within two years and two years from now, half more. So if you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. As Pat Riley, the basketball coach says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. So here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one is to read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. In other words, turn off the television, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. The very best places to read, by the way, are books. Read books written by the most successful people in your field because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level and get much better results than you could before. Reading 30 to 60 minutes a day has doubled and tripled the income of countless people over the years. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can. The courses and seminars available to you in your field are given by professionals developed over years and years. The person talking to you for several hours has spent thousands of hours learning their subject. When you take a course, you can learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years, or maybe even a lifetime. It's like getting a lifetime's worth of learning distilled into a short period. The third way that you can upgrade your skills is to listen to audio programs in your car. The average driver spends 500 to 1,000 hours a year, 25 to 50,000 miles. If you listen to audio programs in your car, according to the University of Southern California, you'll get the equivalent of almost full-time university attendance just by listening to learning material as you drive around. It can totally and profoundly change your life. Interestingly, the more you commit yourself to becoming the best person you can be, the more you like yourself and respect yourself, the more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist. When you invest in yourself and read and learn and upgrade your skills, you're telling yourself, wow, I am a person with a great future and it's up to me to maximize my potential. Your self-esteem goes up, your self-respect goes up, your sense of personal pride goes up and you start to get promoted more and paid more in every part of your life. The sixth C is the C of commitment. You have to put in many, many, many tiny efforts that nobody sees or appreciates before you achieve anything worthwhile. There's no success without commitment, without you putting your whole heart into what you're doing and putting your whole heart into what you're doing for a long time. But if you do, there is no limit on what you can accomplish. You get up in the morning and you make a decision that by gum, I am going to succeed in this business, no matter how long it takes, no matter how many hours a day. And the seventh C is the C of courage. Winston Churchill said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues for upon it all others depend. And courage, what you have, is two parts. The first part of courage is the courage to begin, to launch, to take a chance, to face failure and rejection, to try something with a very great possibility that you will fail and you'll feel embarrassed and upset and your self-esteem will go down and so on. But the second part of courage is persistence. It's the power to keep going, to keep pushing yourself and driving yourself. 
A woman I was going out with before I was married, she asked me, Brian, what is your best quality? And I thought about that, and I think I said, I think my best quality is that I never give up. And I found that that's true because I never give up, and my children never give up. It is not in our vocabulary. We never think, we'll try something different, we'll try something new, we'll take the losses, and so on, but we'll never give up. So, how do you develop this unshakable quality of persistence, which will guarantee your success in life? Nothing can stop you if you don't quit. If you don't quit, then the only alternative is you must succeed. And eventually, you must succeed greatly. Well, the great rule, you become what you think about, but you become what you say to yourself. So what you do is you say to yourself these magic words. You say, I never give up. If you never give up, my promise to you, my guarantee to you, is that you are going to be an enormous success in the months and years ahead. Now, let me pass on one great rule to you, which has been discovered in interviewing self-made millionaires. Self-made millionaires look into every failure for something good. They say, there's gotta be something good in this that I can benefit from. And surprise, surprise, they always find it. Moreover, self-made millionaires always seek the valuable lesson in every setback, obstacle, or temporary failure, and they always find the lesson. Now, what do failures do? Failures whine and cry and think about what they've lost and blame their problems on someone else. Successful people say, what can I learn from this that will make me smarter next time? And my promise to you, those who seek, find. If you go looking for a valuable lesson in the biggest problem that you're facing today, you'll always find the lesson. Another secret that I wanna give you with regard to your major definite purpose, if you only do these two things as a result of our time together, they will transform your life. You've already identified the one goal that can have the greatest positive impact on your life. Now, what you do is you take that goal and you write it at the top of a page in the form of a question. You say, let us say your goal is to double your income. What are all the things that I could do to double my income in the next 12 months? Write it as a clear question. Even better, if you're earning $50,000 a year today, write, what could I do to earn $100,000 over the next 12 months? The more specific the question, the better. Then, you devote yourself to writing 20 answers to this question. You must write a minimum of 20 answers. Work harder, work smarter, start earlier, stay later, change occupations, upgrade my skills, whatever it is. Keep forcing yourself to write until you've written 20 answers. We call this mindstorming. The first three to five answers will be easy, the next three to five answers will be difficult, and the last 10 answers will be incredibly difficult. But I have given this exercise to people who have gone on to become millionaires so many times, I've lost track because they often find that the 20th answer changes their whole life. And if you've ever done this once, it's absolutely staggering. More people have become millionaires with this simple idea of mindstorming, what I call the 20 idea method, than any other single method of creative thinking ever discovered. Once you've got your 20 answers, pick one answer and take action on it immediately. It doesn't matter what it is, just take one answer and take action on it. And that will keep you thinking and acting creatively all day long. And the final quality of self-made millionaires, and Napoleon Hill called this the master key to riches, after studying 500 of the richest people in American history, he said, is the quality of self-discipline. It's the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. The quality of self-discipline is the quality that will make you a big success. It's the ability to force yourself to do what you know you should do. And here is the wonderful discovery. This persistence is self-discipline in action. Every time you persist, you build your self-discipline. Every time you practice self-discipline, you build your ability to persist. And the two of them are tied into your self-esteem. So the more you persist, the more you like yourself. And the more you like yourself, the more discipline you have. And the more discipline you have in practice, the more you like yourself. As a result, the more you persist. And eventually, you get onto an upper spiral where you become absolutely unstoppable. You reach the point where you know you can achieve the goal and nothing in the world can stop you and every step that you take forward makes you stronger and stronger and stronger until finally people say, I know one thing about him, I know one thing about her, you cannot stop him or her. Once they decided they want something, they will not stop until they get it. And when you develop that quality, there will be nothing that is impossible to you. 
Becoming a self-made millionaire is not the important thing. What is really important is the person you have to become to become a self-made millionaire. You have to become a totally different human being. My friend said, one of my friends says that in order to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. And it's a really important insight. The qualities that you need to develop, the qualities on the inside to become a self-made millionaire are incredible qualities that make you a vastly better person. Not only better in terms of character, determination, discipline, decision-making, strength, and so on, they make you a far better person. They round out your character in a far better way so that the real payoff of becoming wealthy is not because you can eat more, because how many more meals can you eat? How many more clothes can you wear? Because it's the kind of person that you become and then the kind of people that you associate, the kind of life that you have. If you have these qualities, your success is virtually guaranteed.